bring you Mr. Broderick Crawford in tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, invite you to return to the 30s as we chronicle the true account of those turbulent years with a report called Dutch Schultz, our star, Mr. Broderick Crawford. And now, presents Dutch Schultz, starring Mr. Broderick Crawford, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Pocket of cigarettes, sir. Oh. Yes, sir. That'll be 11 cents, sir. 11 cents? Yesterday it was 10. Yes, sorry, mister. As of midnight, all major brands went up to 11 cents. This is 1935, you know, not 1932. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are looking up and going up, that's what I say. You say that, huh? Yeah. Ginch. Why? Outside, I got something. Okie dokie. So? Certain parties is meeting tonight up at the hotel. Are you kidding? Hey, Flot, you kidding me? No, Ginch, I wouldn't kid you. You know that. What parties? The big brokers. You know, Harry and Lepke and Lucky. And Albert, he's going to be there. And Gurra. And the boys from Chicago, Milwaukee, Oh, Casey. nobody said nothing to my boss. I just thought you ought to know. The Dutchman ain't going to like this, Flot. He's still got you running numbers. Yeah. Why don't you quit him? I can't. Why not? Mo Weinberg quit that Schultz stuck an ice pick in his ear. Yeah, I heard about that. He's kind of a screwball, huh? Screw? Oh, well, wait till he hears you holding another meeting with Adam. But well, he'll be banging all over the place. Well, maybe you better not go back to Newark today. And who'll he be banging? Me. So I'll take a rest. Tell you what, Ginch, I'll blow you to a show. What's playing? Shirley Temple. I already seen it, but I'll see it again. Shirley Temple, huh? Yeah. She's the cutest little thing, just like a doll. I tell you, Ginch boy, I cried. I honestly did. Are you Harry? Lucky? Boys? All right, gentlemen. I think we are all assembled. Somebody turn that radio off? Uh, you're looking just fine. Hey, Harry, how was the vacation? It was very charming, very charming. Did the missus enjoy herself? Her back gave her a few, what do you call it, twinges, uh, but taken by and large, it was a charming vacation. That's nice. But enough of this pleasantries. To business, gentlemen. The question we have met to deliberate about is this new fellow in the DA's office. That bum has got to be banged in the head. Please, a little consideration? Hey, girl, don't be interrupting, Harry. Sorry. Apologies accepted. Now then... This new fella has been investigating some matter which might prove embarrassing to we fellas if all the facts should become known. I am referring in particular to the stuff he is investigating about the numbers business. Now, since we decided to get smart and form the syndicate... To... What do you mean I don't go in? How are you, boys? Dutch Schultz. Yes, Albert, it's the Dutchman. How come all of my good friends here, the people I've been doing business with for years, how come they're holding councils without the Dutchman, huh? Please, act like a civilized being, will you? Act like you didn't grow up in a barn or somewhere. And you, Harry, you're my pal. What is this? This is a matter concerning New York City, Mr. Schultz. Not New Jersey or Newark, which is why you weren't invited. Well, the way I heard it was, you was going to discuss the new guy in the DA's office. Which is correct, but please, no names. That DA, he's done a lot of bad things to me. I think I ought to be in on a discussion. Frankly, I didn't think you'd be interested, but... Since you see fit to come busting in here, you can stay. Yeah, that's more like it, Harry. Thanks. One thing, though. What? What's that? You're not on the board of the syndicate, Mr. Schultz, so you don't get to vote. Wait a minute. What is this? A bunch of lead pipe hoods, and you're trying to make like big businessmen, big operators. We are businessmen, Dutch. You can sit down and shut up or get out of here. All right. That's more like it. Now then, Harry, you were saying? Ever since that runaway grand jury took out Mr. Dodge... We have had great difficulties keeping the DA's office in line. 
We got plenty of grease, but nobody will pay it to. This new fella, he's incorruptible. So the, the question is, what are we going to do about him? Just give him a treatment he wouldn't forget, that's all. That's what I say. The bum has got to be banged in the head. Now, please, what are you gentlemen, a little consideration. Thank you. You see, Mr. Schultz, times are changing. We don't operate with those tactics anymore. This is big business. We've got to operate with a modicum of intelligence. Modicum? What gives without their modicum? It means an itty bit... All right, why don't he say so? A itty bit intelligence. That I can understand, but modicum... Now please, Mr. Schultz, let me remind you. You're here as an observer only. Oh, please proceed. I was carried away, a modicum. Uh, uh, oh, yes. I operate with intelligence. It seems to me that there is a definite possibility that we may have to resort to drastic measures in dealing with this fella. Yeah. And so I am deputizing Albert here to investigate the situation. This is no ordinary contract, Albert. I want you to figure out how it can be done so nobody gets fingered and nobody gets hurt. Except for that fella, I mean. Will do. The perfect contract. Yeah, and I'll help you. I got a lot of ideas and experience in that line. No. Harry, listen, you don't know how much I hate that new DA. And oh, no. This calls for finesse. And please, no names. Albert, I'm counting on you. Gentlemen, we'll meet here in one week for Albert's report. And in the meantime, don't worry about the future. You know the old saying? Keep smiling. Five thirty-four twenty-three. Seventy-eight fifty. Twenty-three forty-six. Eight hundred ninety-one. And four hundred fifteen sixty-seven. And that, my good friend, winds it up for the night. Really a very nice little take, Inch, if I do say so myself. Yeah, well, just don't you plan on taking any of it for yourself, Abadabba. <laughs> Who can be so stupid? You needn't speak to me like that, Ginch. I know Mr. Schultz. Yeah, but you don't know him like I know him. Yeah, what's the food on the table for? Mr. Schultz. He's back from the meeting. Ah, I was hoping he'd stay in New York, see a show or something. Hi, boss. Hello, Mr. Schultz. Hi, boys. Okay, Berman, what's the tally? Oh, oh very good, Mr. Schultz. $13,561.13 for the day. Uh, that's because of you, Abba Dabba. <laughs> I, it was nothing. Yeah, so they think I'm slipping, do they? You, Gitch, what do you think? Oh, I think you're on top of the world, Dutch. Yeah, and you know why? Because I use my brains. When I ain't got them, I buy them. Those knuckleheads in New York, those big businessmen. They got a numbers racket. Me, I got a numbers racket. Mine pays off the players, but hardly ever. Theirs, it's paying off all the time, and why? Because mine is superior, that's why, because I use my head. I went out and bought me Abba Dabba here. Oh, but I was glad to get the job. I like the money. Shut up! I think, why isn't the numbers paying me more money? Because it's too honest, that's why. It's like a bad slot. When a slot's bad and paying off too much, what do you do? You fix it. So I went over to that college there, and I bought me a student, a mathematical genius. I said to him, kid, you fix this, and I'll take care of you. You were very generous. And was really a fascinating problem. Gitch, what's the matter with South Bayonne? Uh, well, uh, the school kids, we're, we're losing their business. One of their principals is working against our runners. Oh, principal, huh? I hate principals. I had a principal once. His name was... Uh, uh, Jeff C. Condon. Did you ever hear of him? By the Lindbergh case? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. He used to beat my ears off, and I was a defenseless kid, too. Look, I'll tell you what. Ginch, you give this principal a workout. Oh, Dutch, he's an old man. I don't think you heard me good, Ginch. I heard you, Dutch. You're only working guys over. Well, you got plenty of guys who do that sort of stuff. But I want you to do this one, Ginch. Let me show you a trick, Ginch. Come here. Put your hand on the table. Oh, Dutch. Put it on the table there. All right. Oh, that you, you broke it. You, you broke my thumb. Yeah, that was pretty neat, wasn't it, eh? I know a lot of those kind of tricks, kids. So I tell you what now. Every week that passes without you doing what I tell you, like when I tell you to give the principal a workout, I'm going to break another finger for you. What are you staring at? Uh, 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 nothing, sir. All right, that's good. I don't like people to stare at me. Well, how about it, Gitch? How do you feel? Oh, Dutch. I, I, I... Uh... Shouldn't he get that fixed, Mr. Schultz? Yeah, he should. Now, Ginch, here's 50. Go down to the drugstore and get that fixed up. Oh, Ginch, do me a favor. Get me a present for my mother. 
Something nice, a, a big bottle of, of, of Toujours L'Amour. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for your mother. Sure, Dutch. Do you want us to get her some perfume or toilet water? I'll kill you for saying that! Where does he take your ears? Where does he get off talking like that? Stop that! Everything's going crazy around him. My own boys are talking out against me and those businessmen. Just a simple contract. Hit the DA on the head and they're going to meet with the board of directors like... Oh, that's a big deal. Keep smiling, he says. Keep smiling. It is bringing you Mr. Broderick Crawford in Dutch Schultz. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. And now, brings back to our Hollywood soundstage, Mr. Broderick Crawford in Elliot Lewis's production of Dutch Schultz, a true story well calculated to keep you in suspense. All right, gentlemen, all right. All right, Albert. Let's hear it. And Albert, don't give us none of that keep smiling stuff, huh? Look, Schultz, I don't want no trouble with you tonight. Okay, Mr. Businessman, okay. Let's hear the report, huh? All right. I want quiet. I don't want to have to tell this twice. Here it is. The subject under discussion is no DA. This guy's got it 24 hours around. Two plain clothesmen all the time. They watch his building, they escort him everywhere. There's no way to get at him. I mean, no ordinary way. Use a truck. You get a big garbage truck. See, it comes speeding down the street. Mr. Schultz, do we have to have you ejected? All right, all right, go on. My cousin, he's got a little kid, five years old. So what I did, I borrowed this kid, bought him a tricycle, see? Every morning when this fella comes walking out with his bodyguards, there I am, Joe Citizen, typical square, taking my morning physical with my little boy right there by the door. Very nice, good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He comes walking out. He smiles at the kid, sort of tips his hat to me. I swear that guy's going to be a politician someday. And then he walks down to the corner drugstore. Drugstore? Yeah, yeah. And the way I figured... Everybody in City Hall is trying to tap his phone, so he uses the drugstore's public pay station. He goes inside, the two bodyguards keep out in the street. He stays in an average of three minutes, alone, see? Then he comes out, gets in a city limousine, and goes downtown. Very nice information, Albert. Now, uh, how do you work it? He's very precise, this fella. Goes into the drugstore at 8.05 precisely every morning. The fellas who are handling the contract get there early. Bang the druggist with silences. Wait. He comes in. Guards are outside. He goes into the booth. They bang him. Stroll out. We got two, two and a half minutes to get away. The guns get left in the drugstore. That's good. Let's do it. Listen, Albert. I think it's a very compact and neat way to handle a contract. And I only wish I still had you working for me in in this, in your old capacity. Yeah, yeah. Incidentally, the guns I already arranged for. A pair of brand new untraceable government 45s. We lifted him out of a crate down at the federal warehouse. Uh, yeah, it's, it's perfect. Nice work, Albert. But I've been giving this entire matter a lot of thought during the past week. And really, I, I tell you honestly, I, I haven't slept. Now, please, gentlemen, I, I beg of you, a little consideration. All right. All right. Move on. A lot I care. You wouldn't listen. Uh, no, that's better. Now, you know me. I got only your best interests at heart. And I have come to the conclusion that it is in all our best interest that this fellow from the DA's office stays alive. Harry, what are you, buggy or something? This guy's got to go. All right, all right, the boys. You can just quiet down and listen to me. Yeah, Lucky. What do you say? I say Harry's right. The guy lives. You know, we got to look at this with the, the long view. We got to think of the... Syndicate. Uh, you and a syndicate can drop dead. Albert's got the perfect plan. Let's use it. Listen, Schultz, I want you to shut up. And now. Harry's right, and here's why. What can this DA investigate? The Manhattan, nothing else. All right. So we're going to let him. We got a nationwide business to take care of. 
We ain't going to sacrifice that just to so the couple of Times Square number runner can stare at the can. The syndicate will come first. Yeah, but that fella, he's investigating pretty high up. He could, he, he could even get some of we fellas in this room. No, Gura. No? Any lawyer will tell you they can't get an indictment unless they got a solid case. And they can't get a solid case unless they got two witnesses. And that is where we pass out the contracts. You mean, instead of taking us one fellow, we're going to have to take ten, maybe twenty, huh? Yeah, yeah. And here's why. Take this fellow, and it becomes a federal case. It gets out of Manhattan, and it gets out of hand. And you boys are from Chicago and Milwaukee, and KC know what I mean. And you too, Dodge. You don't want this investigation spreading all over in uh, New Jersey. I'm sure Mr. Schultz is beginning to see the light. Now, let's take a vote. Anybody against the notion that we let the little fella go ahead with his investigation? Well, it seems a long way around the barn to have to kill all those witnesses instead of just one fella. We can get them before they start to be news. It's no problem in there. Hey, I'm with you. Well, I'm not. Leaving us, Mr. Schultz? Yeah, yeah, I'm going back to Jersey where the air don't stink from chicken. I take it you don't like the way we operate. Look, Albert here comes up with a perfect contract, and you fancy pants are too chicken to carry it out. Well, listen, lucky Albert, Henry, all the Harry, all the rest of you. Maybe there's somebody in this world who ain't too chicken. That's just a little thought, gentlemen. Just a little thought. Hey, baby. Thanks, baby. Hopton goes to death house. Get your New York Daily Mirror here. Baby. Hey, baby. Hey, Robert Dutch. Those fellas. What you want, Sketch? Stand up at the shoe store there? Yeah. Are you going to want me any more today, Dutch? No, I'll go back to Newark. Sure, Dutch. Hello, Mr. Schultz. Are you the fella? Yeah. Toy's the name. This is my partner, Murray. You fellas want to make a little? Depends on a contract. Uh, that's an easy contract. I got it all figured out so there'll be no problem. Who's the mark? Just a fella. I got to know who. What's the matter? What's it to you who? It's just a job, that's all. It's no problem, Toy. Look, what is this? What's with you? A couple of sissies or something? You scared of a little job? I asked Inch to get me some fella who could handle a little contract. Look... You want to know who the fella is? All right, I'll tell you, I got nothing to hide. It's the new DA in New York. Come on, Murray. Wait a minute, where you gone? You got the wrong parties, Mr. Schultz. Haven't you heard? The DA lives. That's the word from the syndicate. Ah, uh, hello, Flat. What happened to your arm? What's with the sling? Dutch. Oh. First the thumb, then a the wrist, something he thought I said about his mother. He's an animal, that's what. Another year with Dutch, I'm going to be in very bad condition. And you can't quit. That's right. You won't let me go. Bull quit. Dutch stuck an ice pick in his ear. Ginch, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm crazy, but if I tell you something, would you tell Dutch? I wouldn't tell him if his hat was on fire. Certain parties is having a meeting tonight. Six o'clock. Oh, oh, that's one he really don't know about. Gentlemen, the situation is fraught with danger to us all. I don't know. If it was anybody else, I would say forget about it. It being the Dutchman, he's just screwy enough to follow through. My boys never lied to me. They say he's out shopping for a man to take the contract right now. Been talking about it for almost a week. There's only one thing to do. We got to take Dutch before he takes that fellow from the DA's office. Albert, you got any ideas? Uh, Dutchman is kind of screwy, but he ain't crazy. You know what I mean. He's not the kind of a fellow you just walk up to and do it. He's covered all the time. I know where he's hanging out this week. Where's that, Lucky? The Palace Chop House over in Newark. I know that place. It's got a little private dining room in the back there. The fellow would have to be screwy to try it in there. 
Yeah, I got just some men. Bug. Huh? Mandy. In here. Got a job for you, Bug. Contract. <laughs> yeah. Who? Cool. Dutch. Okay. It's got to be fast. Sure. Fast. I mean tonight. Okay. Tonight. Mandy, you drive. Come on. Walk you down to the car. Uh, the probable business. Yeah, yeah. Well, gentlemen, we got nothing more to talk about tonight, so I would suggest we get out and get seen, if you follow me. Four hundred and eighty-three, eleven. Sixty-eight, fifty-one. Seventeen, thirty-nine. Five hundred and fifty, even. Hundred and thirty-seven, forty-five. Look, stop that creepy whistling, will you? I'll fix your whistle so it'll never blow again. All right, now. Seven hundred and seventy-five, fifteen. That does it. What am I going to do to that ginch when he gets back? I told him to go back to Newark. Where is he? Maybe he missed the train. Or something. Look at Berman. I need you around here to handle my books and keep my numbers business functioning. I don't like it. You should be talking all the time and whistling like a boy, like a, like a schoolboy. Uh, sorry, Mr. Schultz. I'm going to be in business for a long time, Berman. Remember that. You want to get rich? Stick with me. Yes, sir. I'm with you, Mr. Schultz. But keep your mouth shut, see? Tight shut. Now get those tallies added up. I'm going to wash my hands. Yeah, okay. You with the glasses. Hmm? Whom are you addressing, may I ask? Where's Dutch? He went to the bathroom. But you, you haven't answered my question. Kid, you bother me. I'm sorry, it's busy. So am I. Busy. Busy as a bee. Say, Gincho boy, Gincho boy, was a hot seat tatsy or was a hot seat tatsy? Oh, it was a hot seat tatsy, all right, Flato boy. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm not Oi, boy, I, I sure let you talk, man, staying in New York. Dutch is really going to be sore me now. Ah, oh, forget it. Come on, come on, we'll go up to Lindy's, have a couple of drinks, see you standing around. All right, stay, Listen, Fry, I can't, I'm in so much trouble now. Hey, wait, Dutch what's that? Listen. Dutch Schultz gunned to death by mystery figure, pay me up. I asked you to get the New York Journal of America. Did you hear and that? The Dutchman gets hit. Come on, let's buy a paper. Let's buy all the papers. Yeah, even the time. Yeah, we'll take them up to Lindy's. And have a drink. And have a party. A hey, boy. And a newsboy. Suspense. Tonight's star, Mr. Broderick Crawford. Next week, Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Dutch Schultz was adapted for Suspense by James Poe. Featured in tonight's cast were Jane Novello, Herb Butterfield, Hi Aberback, Paul Fries, Sidney Miller, Jack Moyles, Benny Rubin, and Anthony Barrett. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>